It's creating virtual reality simulation of your brain, allowing me to put myself in your shoes, looking at the world from your vantage point. I'm Ramachandran, and I work at the University of California, San Diego, at the Center for Brain and Cognition. Uh, I do research in behavioral neurology, look at patients who have sustained injury or have a genetic change in a small region of the brain, look at the changes in their minds, changes in their behavior, and ask what can you um, understand about the functions of the normal human brain by looking at these abnormal pa patterns of behavior. We've been interested in the last two or three years in a phenomenon called synesthesia. It goes all the way back to Francis Galton in the 19th century, where people who are otherwise normal, a certain proportion of people, about five or 10 percent of the population, when they see numbers, they see colors. So every time they see a number, it's a particular, tinged with a particular color. So five is red, six is blue, seven is green, yellow is orange. Sometimes tones are colored. F sharp is blue, C sharp is green. So people thought they were crazy. What do you mean when you say five is red? Uh, or that they are high on drugs, or they're just remembering childhood memories. So we showed, in fact, these people are not crazy, that uh, they do indeed experience these colors. They're literally seeing these colors when they see the numbers. The question is, what's going on in their brains? We did some experiments, perceptual experiments and brain imaging studies, which showed that the number area in the brain is right next to the color area in the brain in a structure called the fusiform gyrus. And in all of us, these areas are quite separate and distinct. They're next to each other, but they're quite distinct in their properties, and they're not connected to each other. But in these people, there's some extra wires, some excess connections between these two regions for colors and numbers. So every time they see a number, a number neuron, so to speak, is activated, and that spontaneously cross-activates a color neuron in the brain. So every time you see a number, you see a corresponding color. And you may say, well, so what? What's the big deal? You've explained this quirky phenomenon, synesthesia. Well, it turns out synesthesia is eight times more common among artists, poets, and novelists, and other creative people. So this may give you some insights into what makes people artistic or creative. Mirror neurons have been studied extensively during the last 10 years. It was discovered by Giacomo Zurizzolati in Parma and his colleagues. What they found was there are certain neurons in the monkey's brain. It turns out they exist in human brains as well in the front of the brain that fire when the monkey performs specific movements like reaching out and grabbing a peanut or pushing somebody. These are called motor command neurons. They've been known for a long time. But a subset of these neurons, called mirror neurons, will fire. Let's say there's a neuron in my front of my brain which fires when I move and grab a peanut. Another neuron for pushing something. It turns out that the same neuron, the peanut grabbing neuron, some of these neurons will fire when I watch you grabbing the peanut. The neuron is saying, in effect, that person is doing the same thing as you would be doing when reaching out for a peanut, so that person is about to reach for a peanut. This is called a mirror neuron. Right? It's creating virtual reality simulation of your brain, allowing me to put myself in your shoes, looking at the world from your vantage point. So this may be important, imitation, imitation learning, because to imitate you, I have to put myself in your shoes, look at the world from your point of view. For example, a patient with a phantom limb, when he watches somebody else being touched, feels it in his phantom. The reason is his mirror neurons are firing away, just as, just as there are mirror neurons for movements, there are mirror neurons for touch. So if somebody touches my hand, a sensory neuron in my brain fires. Same neuron fires when I simply watch you being touched. So, so the, the neuron is telling the brain, what's happening to that person is the same thing that would happen if you were touched, so I empathize with that person. So empathy for sensations, also is carried out by mirror neurons. So, so what happens is then the question arises, why is it if somebody touches you and I'm watching you, I don't literally feel the touch sensation because the same neurons are firing. The reason is the skin, receptors in my skin, go there and veto that signal, preventing me from actually experiencing the, the touch sensations when I merely watch you being touched. So when the arm is removed, I have a phantom, this feedback veto signal is removed, so when I watch you being touched, I feel it in my phantom. This may have therapeutic implications because when I watch it being massaged, I feel the massage in my phantom hand. And this phantom pain, watching you being massaged, this phantom massage relieves the phantom pain. This has not been tested yet clinically, but we think it looks promising.